His opponent in the red corner hails from Venezuela. He's wearing the red trunks with a white trim. He has a professional record of 26 wins, one loss, three draws. He weighed in today at 128 and one half pounds. Antonio Espadagosa. <laughs> Referee Al Munoz with the instructions. Cuando hay un knockdown tiene que irse a la esquina neutral para comenzar el contado. Y cuando le diga que se separen quiero que hagan caso al mandato. Eh, choquen la mano y salgan peleando. This bout scheduled for 10 rounds. Their featherweights and again, Espada Goza, the young man you look at right now, already has a fight that could get him a world championship coming up in February with the current WBA champion Stevie Cruz in Fort Worth. A tune-up fight for him here tonight against Octavio Quinones out of Juarez, O Mexico, fighting out of El Paso. And we'll find out how long the young man of the dark trunks can stand up against this outstanding featherweight. He's outstanding. Of course, any time you take a tune-up fight, you have to be very serious when you're in the ring. But I don't think that Quinones is any real threat at all. He looks very weak to me. And, I, you know, it's been said so many times in the boxing rituals that everyone has to take on a duck every once in a while. Espada goes out again, just wanting to sharpen those tools. He has been looking for the fight with the champion. Allah, he thought he might was going to get uh, Perry McQuiggins, of course, and uh, Stevie Cruz kind of ended that in a hurry. And now he has a chance to fight Cruz, but it will be in Cruz's hometown. So he's getting a little of that outside competition here in Phoenix, Arizona, coming from his native Venezuela. You know, it's a good fight to take when you look at the schedule. And he's going to be fighting for the title in February. You know, I do like something about him right so far. He has a good defensive posture. But then again, he is so much taller than Stevie Cruz. Could present a problem. I'm looking forward to that fight. Both fighters weighing in at 128 and a half. As Tanagoza was quite concerned with his weight, as a matter of fact, he came into the press room area where the scales were located the last two or three days and weighed about virtually every four to five hours. But I had to tell him one time that the <laughs> scales were not in there. I do not speak any Spanish, so quite obviously that was a very no-win situation for both of us there. I tell you, that's one thing the fighter shouldn't have to worry about when he's coming into a fight in tip-top condition, whether he will make the weight. You know, when you talk about making the weight, I think that was the psychological edge that the thrown Donald Carey in his fight with Lloyd Hunnigan. Thinking about making the weight, when you have to think about yep. that all the time, it really becomes something that works against you. As Spadagosa, you can see, very much of a tactician, even though he got a looping right hand by Quinones. Look the way he writes himself very quickly. He just waits for that one punch. I'm not sure he wants to throw that one too many times, that looping right. But he leads with the left, follows a grip with the right hand. Shaking the right hand a little bit. I'm not so sure he didn't hurt that thing a little bit. Maybe that's just the style. Have not seen him fight yet, but this is my first opportunity. Maybe Octavio will make me eat my words, call him a duck so early in the fight. Well, Espadagosa shakes the right hand all the time, so he did not hurt the fist. See him kind of shaking the right hand as he comes in. I think that's a style of his, if you can recall back in the late 1970s, about 1979, 1981. It was, of course, a real nice standaway by the name of Jeff Challenger. He used to always shake sure. the right hand. Sam Smith along with Ronnie Duncan as we are just underway in round one. This is set for 10 tonight in the featherweight. Number one rank in the WBA in the red. As Paracosa and again, Quinones out of Juarez, Mexico, fighting out of El Paso now. In the dark trunks. He's a journeyman at 15 and 4. And he fights on in round one. We'll be back to start round number two of this action from Phoenix in a moment. And then come over top with the right hand. Again, the whistle does not sound to give the seconds in the corner, the 10 seconds to get out of the ring, and they're all in there when the bell goes off. And we're underway in round number two. The Venezuela in the red again has done very well through round number one, even though Quinones looped a couple of right hands to the head. Espada goes up, didn't uh, show any ill effects of either one of the punches, stayed in there very steadfast, and you can see the very meticulous style that he comes under. Sam, what we saw there was a very sneaky right hand. And once again, he tried to deliver it, but pretty soon you're going to find out that Espagoza will get the timing of that and will counter that with the left. Quinones, in his last fight in Fort Worth, was knocked out in the second round by a very good featherweight contender in the name of Robert Bird, an amateur oh, out yes. of the Fort Worth, Dallas area. And Bird wasted no time as 
as far as goes, it gets another right hand. He's got two in a row there. He knows he's taking them both, but he will take some abuse there and comes back after the center of the ring, dreaming now that he doesn't want to get that right hand again. I tell you, when Espargoza moves that right hand, sometimes it can be a little paralyzing. Who knows? I mean, it's almost like putting a guy under hypnosis. Look at this. Look at this. It's coming to you. Is, that a, bit of, is that a bit of the Cobra act here? <laughs> a bit of the Cobra. You never know. Antonio may have let him off the hook a little bit as he wades in, looping the right hands to the body. Got two solid right hands on Keynote. He's had him in trouble. There's another good right hand. You notice he's fighting on pure perseverance right now in round two. For young fighters watching this fight, look as far it goes, because what he's doing is that he's moving in combinations. He's putting everything together. He's going to the head, he's digging to the body, offsetting this man, and really offsetting the balance, not giving this guy a chance to really set up. These are the featherweights tonight, and one of our preliminary bouts, certainly a top contender in Antonio Espargoza. Well, we've got the future champions coming our way. The number one and two contenders in the WBA Junior Featherweight, Espinoza, along with Beloy. That'll be our main event coming up in just a few moments. Good body punch. are really going to work now. I tell you, good body puncher, and he is definitely digging. He reminds you in his younger days when he was digging very hard. Also, excellent condition. Does not even seem to be breathing hard here as he is in the closing 30 seconds. So this is the second round. And another right hand. He knows he's really kind of fell through the rope. Good gesture, though, because he could have jumped in. Remember, we're talking about boxing. And the referee tells you, protect yourself at all times. A-E, the initials of the young man in the red on his trunks. Antonio. Antonio doing well in round number two. Well, he has got a great determined look on his face as the bell sounds in Phoenix, Arizona tonight. Glad you could join us. This is championship night. The WBA junior featherweight title, Louis Espinosa, will go up against Tommy Beloy in our main event later tonight. Right now in the red from Venezuela, Antonio Esparagosa, along with Octavio Quinones from Juarezo, Mexico. Antonio in the red, and he has had control almost from the very start of this fight. Look at the authority he's showing in his punches right now. You would think perhaps maybe he threw maybe a stronger punch in the second round, but he just, I mean, unleashed the right hand that really set this guy saying, where in the world am I? I thought maybe Stevie Cruz might come to Phoenix to watch this fight. Certainly somebody from the Dave Gorman stables out of Fort Worth. I have the word that they did not make it, but you know there'll be a tape in their machine in the very few days to look at this young man. I tell you, when you talk about Stevie Cruz, you talk about a very talented fighter. That fighter with Barry McGuigan, he displayed so much talent, and he is perhaps one of the finest counterpunches in that division. He may need it the way this young man's fighting here tonight. I think the one thing that stands out in Stevie Cruz's fights with McGuigan is the face that Cruz was out of that fight at about the 8th or ninth round and went 15 to win it. What perseverance. And there's a good right hand. Asparla goes it, trying to finish off Kinoni's here on the third. And he's doing a good job of it. Kinoni's a journeyman, 15 and 4, and he's down for the first time tonight. Once again, it was a body shot right to the left kidney, and I mean he put him down, and he's feeling the pain. This kid is going to give Stevie Cruz all that he can handle. A good technician, good defensive fighter. Think about it, how many times has he been hit? Our last fight, an ill-advised continuation by the referee. It's a little better this time. Quinones was up. He was alert. Had the gloves up. And also, even though he looks a little starry-eyed, he looked much better than the last fight that probably should not have gone on. And now, Quinones is down. And now they're going to throw in the towel from across the way. There it is. They want to throw it in the because of the time. It is over. So Quinones will go down on the third for the second time. The corner says that's enough. And Antonio Espanagosa has picked up his 27th win in route to a title shot against Stevie Cruz in February. We'll be back with the official time of the TK. Tommy Malloy for the vacant WBA World Championship tonight. It's set to go 15. Tonight, as befits the rules of the WBA, we will have four judges.